Well, all right, all right, all right. And welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean. That over there is Brian. What's up? Oh my God, my show is woke. What do I do? And what I guess I could do? put a slash in there. My my show, my TV show or slash game is woke. What do I do? That is the question. What is the answer, Brian? Uh, go back to the drawing board. <laughs> well, I mean, I think there's what? Probably really only two likely scenarios, right? There is the... Uh, suck it up and deal with it camp and then there's the well i can try and boycott said maker of product and maybe they'll feel the sting and change their evil ways right that's the big hope for some yeah so i don't know i would say the the middleman is more important because like uh, i'm not as concerned with like leslie headland's other work obviously as i am with the acolyte and what disney has done with star wars overall right yeah for sure um yeah like i got nothing against you want to go do you elsewhere fine but you know when you're getting into ips that i care for dearly especially things like doctor who which have gotten slapped around pretty bad you know um yeah i don't i don't i don't like you trying your experiments with my stuff man it's my stuff (laughs) <laughs> well unfortunately the people like in these businesses the olds in the in the biz, busy important rooms at these businesses they think that to reach a, a, a younger audience this is this is how they do that yeah That's and i mean i don't know who told them that i mean it sounds like the people that are doing it are the same people that told themselves that it's like, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they literally just went one from one room to the other and said, Hey, you know, That's a good mean, idea. <laughs> yeah, I like patting yourself on the back type deal. I mean, it's just, I don't know. So I would be, I have sucked it up and dealt, dealt with it lately. I've been that guy. Obviously, yeah. there's been some stuff I've liked that's been tainted with that. I mean, a good example. Uh, is a recent, you know, I didn't think that much of the uh, recent Comic-Con was, I didn't think there was that great of stuff. You know, there was even the hidden Doctor Who panel that nobody knew about, apparently, you know, but uh, a great clip from uh, Strange New Worlds came out of that. And it is freaking hilarious, dude. And I can't wait for this show to come around. But the elephant in the room is how heavily female centric that particular part is. Of all the away team to go, they were all female except one, and that was the captain. And, of course, he's got to be in this, you know. Um, but, it, you know, it's just so funny. Like, I mean, I didn't care. Honestly, I didn't care because they're all – they've all proven themselves in previous episodes to be quite capable. You know, this is a, a much stronger Uhura than we're used to. We enjoy Uhura. all these characters. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's not like I don't notice it, but th- those, one of those that it's, it's good writing, it's fun to be around. So, you know, you're not forcing it down my throat. Yeah, I see it. It's happening. And this is kind of how I, how I think of things and how they were done in the past. You know, I feel like this is kind of the way I, it should be. Right. So, you know, you have that versus the acolyte, which was just, or doctor who, which I mentioned before, which is just blatant. I mean, this this recent panel at the comic con, you know, they were trying to ask Russell T Davis about that. And he just kind of side skirted the question. He just said, you know, I, I write what I know. And so he would never do that. That's so stupid, dude, you know, Dr. Who. So you're y'all, but you've proven that obviously the, the political stuff's more important to you than actually just telling a good Dr. Who story. And that's what everybody has a problem with. You know, right. it's not even the content of your political stuff. It's the fact that you you chose that over just telling good Doctor Who. Well, there is another elephant in the room I want to address, which is Dave Filoni. Um, you know, he he has kind of backed all of this recent stuff. And I honestly think it's under duress, not directly, but like he knows I agree. who is signing the paycheck and he has to get along to go along. I either think you're right I or I just hope you're right. Right, yeah. Or I'm just telling myself you're right to make it okay because I really don't want it to be the other thing. Yeah. You know, because he's 
our last best hope for peace. <laughs> you know? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think even Scorsese can appreciate the need for representation out there, right? And that there is a place in all film for some of this, right? Sure. Some. Sure. Right. But it, it's just like you can't substitute real material with this. Yeah, no doubt. So that's one side of it. The other is trying to boycott said company that produces your product uh, that, that, that you're upset about. And, you know, the, the, the company that comes to mind in, in this case would be for Doctor Who and Star Wars would be Disney. Yep, and I know uh, you've got Disney Marvel. products all over your house, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Disney in a lot of ways. I would love to go to, to there. I would have liked to have gone up until recently to the, uh, you know, the Walt Disney World, whatever. But um, to ride rides and stuff like that, that part of Disney I, I, I dig. And, and some of the old stuff, the stuff from the 80s and before is all right. But I had a good time at Epcot when I was a kid and the rides as kid. But going back as an adult, it is just not. It's the DeSoto Disney experience that we yeah. discussed before. Yeah, I've had that. I've had that too uh, yeah. with Disney for sure. When I went back at sixteen, it was like whoa! It wasn't even right. as adult. It was at sixteen. It was so different. Yeah. And the thing is, how can you hurt Disney? That's the, can you do it? Because then, on the top of the fact that let's say we got everybody together and did this big boycott on Disney, right? Then things like Wolverine and um, Deadpool come along yep. and make their money back in two days. And then it's going to be straight profit after that. Right. And you know it's going to be hitting big for at least a couple weeks for sure. Then you got all the stuff on the back end like streaming and all that money that it rakes in. And then, you know, who cut juice? Man, this thing is... Uh, Actually... We do need to address the other elephant in the room with that, right? Like creators are not making as much on that on the back end as they used to back in the day. Like the royalties and everything that everybody lives off of. Yeah. You know, you can you can recoup up from a bad box office. Right. Uh, with sales later on. But you can't oh, yeah, do that sure. anymore. Because yeah. it's pennies on the dollar. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, but sorry. Um so yeah, they rake in enough money to where Disney's like, you know, screw you guys. We're just going to continue plowing on with our political message, and we don't care what you think. Now the other hope is that just you know Bob Iger comes around and says, "What the hell are y'all guys doing?" You know, I actually want to make people happy, and I actually want the product to be good, and, and them to get the, the the TV shows and the games they want. <laughs> this is not what I want to be doing at this point in my life, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I what. This is all about fantasies, uh, too. You know, these these are scenarios that, that could happen. Not necessarily would happen, but, you know, they could happen. So the big thing to me is, like, so we talked, we just brought it up with the uh, Strange New Worlds. Yeah. You know, the female-centric part of it. Mm -hmm. the, that's really not an issue. And I, like I said, they did it right. It seemed like it wasn't, you know, like overly he heavy-handed. But in the geopolitical climate we're in now, it's just kind of obvious. It's it's kind of glaring. So, yeah. um, it wouldn't. It wasn't a big deal, is what I'm trying to say. And it wouldn't have been a big deal back in the day, but today it is. And I made a list of strong female characters that we've had on television over the years since like the late '70s. And I've been trying to find a place for it, either making its own video or whatever. But you know, most of the time with these shows. It's like people say, oh, it's, you know, very female centric. That's OK. It can be that, it, you know, it's just I get it with the with the time we're in, you know, it it it, it just seems a little rough. But you, we've had it all through time and especially since the 60s, 70s and, and going on. So I've got like a list of. And pictures, too. Girls. One of the first females I thought about right out of the gate was the bionic woman like Lindsay Wagner totally had me. And like, even as, you know, four or five year old kid, like I was like, wow, you know, this, I was all into the bionic woman when I was a kid yeah. and wonder woman, man, Linda Carter, like Linda, there, yeah. there they are together in the same thing. I don't even know what that is, but uh, yeah, I mean, like right out of the gate, we got two of the strongest ones there. Um, Aaron Gray, love me some Aaron Gray, man. Wilma Deering. That grew up I mean, in that. 
who could who could ask for anything better than Aaron Gray? These are the Battlestar Galactica girls. You had like uh, Jane Seymour, huge mm-hmm. actress back in the day. Yeah. Um, then you had girls like oh Brie, this girl right here. She was known as Brie on the show. Gorgeous girl, that one. I was in love with her. But they, these are the these all these uh, this picture right here. They took over for all the pilots. They were sick at the time, so all these girls had to step up and fly. And and basically save the day, you know, in an episode. So yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I mean, like, this is this is still in the seventies, mind you. Um, yeah, that's that same picture. Sigourney Weaver, man. Every nerd's favorite, right? I mean, this really, I mean, is the the strong female of all strong females when it comes to battle and stuff. I mean, that alien was no joke, and then she's, you know. Uh, half naked throughout the thing battling it's just crazy dude um we got i'm just gonna run through go ahead i I just say i often wanted to say how hard do you think it would be to to write those not just alien but aliens as well in this current environment with with all the pronouns that were inherent in the script uh in the beginning right yeah because nobody was gender identified at any point until it started going into production. Right. Just stuff like that. And, you know, if you've seen alien, if you've seen the original, you know, all the wow factor about it. If you didn't come to it early on, you know, maybe there's a place of veneration. It just doesn't hit the same, right. Cause there's been so much done since, but the, the tension, the, the drama, everything about the, the original, you couldn't do that anymore, I don't think. Yeah, but Sigourney, no. I loved her in three. She, uh, you know, that character was the only saving grace of that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it three has a special place in my heart. It got a lot of hate for sure, but Some of uh, it was deserved. But maybe not all of it. Yeah. I mean, it's not the greatest, but whatever. Yeah. Um, we have uh, what's next here? Tasha Yar, mm-hmm. Denise Crosby, obviously. Yeah. And um, I'm just going to run through some of these quick, like uh, Major Kira. I mean, Star Trek was littered with them. If anybody was doing it right, they're like, and we were just talking about it with Strange New Worlds, right? And they're still doing it right. Even though they're in the environment they're in nowadays, they're still trying to do it right. And well, look at OT, right? Yep. They yeah. did it right. It's been done throughout. <laughs> What can you say, man? I mean, like, yeah, they've they've been you get taking, it, you get it. <laughs> they've been throwing it out in front of the masses since the sixties, yeah. And yeah. probably the only ones really doing that that I can think of. I don't know many, but of course I wasn't alive then. It was right. Who knows for sure. Uh we got Lieutenant Dax. Man, she was like super fucking uh just badass. Yeah. Um yeah, Janeway. She's still coming back in that show, that cartoon show they got, right? Right, Prodigy. It's called Prodigy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a great, great example of strong female. Seven of nine, man. Every dude in 1997 was like, <laughs> whoa, Nelly. Yeah, she's, and she's still kicking ass, you know, in like Picard and whatever. And if we ever get our new show, hopefully. We'll see. Belana Torres, strong Klingon female, yeah. Man, Linda Hamilton. The Terminator. I feel bad for her because, like, I feel like she she wasn't necessarily, like, the strong female protagonist in the first one, but she was still a, a strong female protagonist, in my opinion, in some elements of it. Um, but as I understand it from her, after Terminator 2, she was just tired of being associated with that after, like, you know, two decades or whatever had gone by yeah. and I, I could just imagine that would be a pain as well but well she did nothing else after that too so i don't exactly. know exactly i mean i don't know <laughs> if that was typecasting or what or maybe she just wanted to disappear i have no idea maybe yeah but that but, was definitely a, everybody talks about how strong that lead was right yeah for sure i mean super strong yeah and let's see we have commander ivanova from babylon 5 mm-hmm. good one we have Xena, Warrior Princess. Of course. Um, Buffy. 
going up through the 90s now to paul from uh enterprise again another star trek show they were always doing it right man yep save the best for last jamie lee curtis hey she's still kicking ass to this day man like i mean yeah. all the, the latest halloween movies were actually pretty good now i'm not you asked me earlier if i if i liked halloween i, I was a friday 13th fan obviously a nightmare on Elm street fan <laughs> You know, and uh, I don't know. Halloween was, you know, we were very young and uh, Jason was just more my generation or not of my generation. But, you know, it was I was a little older, so I could remember it better. Yeah. Although I remember I seeing say, it on TV, Halloween. I, I, but uh, yeah, so I mean, like the, the whole point of showing you guys all that stuff was just to remind you, like they've been around forever. Yeah. It's 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 not like these guys that are doing it now are coming up with anything new, right? They're not being innovative. They're being annoying with it. You know, they're being reductive in my opinion. Sure. Well, it's, it's again, it's like I said last week, it's, you know, it's overcompensating. Yeah. There's no need for it. You're doing something that's been done long time before now, long time. And nobody gave a shit back then. And now people give a shit now only because you're just making it this big thing. Like it, and again, it goes back to that thing. You chose to make a political statement rather than just make the good show or make the good game. Stick to what the game or show the, the universe is about, whatever its lore is or whatever. It's yeah. more important than you make it about you. You know, and that's what it is. You know, like I, it pisses me off. It's like Russell T. Davis. It's like, screw you, dude. You know, this is this show isn't about you, man. It's about everybody who watches it. But now you've just alienated all of your audience except for that one percent who likes what you're doing. All right. And it's ridiculous. I don't know. I feel like there should be an honorable mention for uh we've been talk talking really kind of exclusively in action, horror, stuff like that, sci fi, whatnot. I think Rhea Perlman deserves an honorable mention. She was a strong female yeah sure and yeah. everything that she did and uh it was just a different kind of strong female lead right right it still worked everywhere she did it yeah in my opinion yeah you had that like uh Roz on night court man i mean mm -hmm. they were they were littered everywhere not only was a uh, woman but also black so i mean again this is not new to us guys we've seen this shit for years just quit already so, but listen, it's about to give. I can feel it now. I mean, like we said, Microsoft's DEI team is gone. The, the, all of these companies are going to realize, hey, this was just a fad. This was just something we thought we had to do to keep the money flowing. And now we realize we don't have to do it because there really is the minority of people out Hold there and the they money. don't buy that much stuff, do they? <laughs> right. So, hello. Well, that's the hope anyway. Well, uh, you so, know, whenever, you know, that, yeah. Whenever something bad ha happens, you hope that the the market reflects that right all i can hope for is that we still have these these uh, few production companies like the one that just got a hold of paramount that aren't really woke, known for being woke so that's something um i'm looking forward to seeing these start to get claw their way back you know um because a lot of these people in in hollywood or wherever uh they don't if if they're on one if they're on the opposite side of the, the liberal fence they don't say so right they're keeping their mouth shut because their job might be on the line otherwise but i think that's going to change soon i think more and more people are going to just come out and say look we're going to make a shit our way it's our artistic vision let us get on with it i, I leave I the politics I, at home i kind of feel like that is what has has really been lacking is People with vision like Scorsese and and I even put Mangold in the same group with him as well as James Cameron and others. But like, you know, if you have talent, then the execs should let you work. But if you're new, and this is like, okay, this is the the new stuff that we're doing. We're aiming at these people, and this is how we're going to do that. That's not. That's not creative. That's business, right? So yeah. I guess that's where I stand on it. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's a fine line you got to walk because why why it is art and creating, it is also a business. So yeah. it is what it is.
But um, yeah, so I, you know, that's just what I wanted to say about it, man. I mean, like I continue to see this stuff about outlaws and uh, I've been, I have seen a lot more positive reviews finally starting to pop out. Now the people that have actually played it can say so we're getting the truth, you know, and really more and more. It just goes to show you, excuse me, I didn't mean to burp in the microphone there, <laughs> but it just goes to show you that you need to wait. You need to really analyze, get your hands on it yourself if you can, and then make your decision. Stop letting people make decisions for you, man. It's ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Be a leader. Don't be a follower. And on that note, guys. Know, at the very least, wait until your favorite streamer decides to play some of it or do whatever. Give them yeah. the full release of it. Yeah, exactly. These guys, they get too big for their britches. And they think, oh, I'll just say this and everybody will like it and follow what I say and blah, 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 blah. Give me a let's play or else, right? (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yep. So that's cool, man. So thank you guys. Listen, hey, if you made it this far, please give us a like and subscribe. It costs you nothing. So we thank you because it helps us out a lot. And... That'll about do it, guys. So, as always, please remember, be excellent to each other. And Brian and I will see you on the flip side. Everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah.